What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, the top story this week comes from All Things D, and they report Apple will hold its next invitation only event on Tuesday, October the 22nd, with iPads, the new Mac Pro, and OS X Mavericks being the focus. Now, iPad leaks continue to pour out, including these high res images from Sonny Dixon with the new iPad 5 in its space gray color as well. We've heard rumblings of an improved camera, but we're just a few weeks out from the official announcement. The new Mac Pros won't be a surprise anymore, but we'll find out how pricey they come in at. And OS X Mavericks will also be featured, but a report from 9to5Mac says Apple has already begun development on its successor that's internally being called Syrah after a type of wine after this screenshot was snapped. Now, if you want to hear more Apple product rumors, a report from CNET says according to NPD display search predictions, Apple is planning multiple screen size improvements and enhancement in 2014, including, get ready for this list because these are their predictions, two models of the iPhone including an iPhone 6 with a 4.7 inch display and a phablet sized 5.7 inch iPhone. Okay. They also talk about a 12.9 inch big iPad, an iPad mini 2 with a retina display. And finally, they expect to see a Retina MacBook Air and an iWatch with a 1.3 inch screen and the Apple TV in two flavors, a 55 inch and 65 inch screen size. So we'll uh, check back with this list in a year and see how they did. All right, one of the new features in the iPhone 5S has been its camera. A National Geographic photographer, Jim Richardson, decided to use the 5S to photograph the Scottish Highlands and leave his Nikon DSLR behind. Although he found it difficult to get used to at first, he described the 5S as a very capable camera with amazingly good color and exposures, and he was a fan of the panorama, an option for taking square photos to get into Instagram. But I should probably stress that not everyone will be able to take pictures that look this good with their iPhone 5S. In fact, they'll probably look more like this. All right, let's take a break. Some people are happy with iOS 7, some people aren't, and it runs horribly on an iPhone 4. Don't even do that if you can avoid it. But here's a how-to for helping you save battery life. A new version of iOS means a fresh new look, handy new settings, and a boatload of features that have good intentions, but really just suck up your phone's battery life. So if you noticed your phone is draining faster since updating to iOS 7, or you want to know how to get more juice out of it, here are some tips. Background app refreshing is a feature that lets background apps stay active while you multitask. The problem is that by default, all your apps are enabled to refresh in the background, which is a huge battery hog. Head on over to Settings, General, then Background App Refresh. Here, you can disable the feature entirely, or you can disable just the ones you don't absolutely want to refresh. iOS 7's automatic updates aren't generally a problem, but the last thing you want is 15 apps to start updating when your battery is at 20%. So, turn that feature off. Just go to the iTunes and App Store settings and disable this Updates option. Now you can update your apps whenever it's best for you. One of the biggest battery drains is always location tracking. Usually that applies to using mapping apps, but hidden in your settings menu are a whole bunch of new settings that sneakily track your location. Under Privacy, go to Location Services. Then scroll all the way down and choose System Services. Some of these settings are designed to improve your experience. For instance, Popular Near Me tracks your location to give you app recommendations based on where you are. Go ahead and disable any features you don't absolutely need, including this frequent location setting at the bottom. Spotlight is super useful because it lets you search for almost anything on your phone. And the way it works is by constantly crawling your phone for new data and indexing it. That's a huge battery drain. Back in settings, go to General, Spotlight Search, and uncheck the items you don't absolutely need indexed. With that and all the other adjustments, you should see a nice boost in your battery life. Thanks for that one, Sharon. Now onto the quick bites. There's a lot of people asking about when iTunes Radio is coming to their neck of the woods. It may not be as early as you like, but according to Bloomberg, Apple is planning to expand the service to the UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand by early 2014. Now Samsung's Galaxy Gear is airing their commercials for the new smartwatch, but it definitely has the same feel to Apple's original iPhone ad campaign. It's just too bad that the attempt to be first to market didn't work out when it's getting hammered by reviewers across the board. 
And this is pretty cool. Johnny Ive teamed up with friend Mark Newsom to create a few one-of-a-kind products for an upcoming Product Red Charity auction. Now, a couple of the items, 18 karat solid rose gold Apple ear pods that would kind of match the phone. But check this one out. It's a one-of-a-kind laser machined aluminum body Leica M camera that just looks sick. Now, it took 85 days to create. It went through 561 different models and nearly 1,000 prototype parts. So this is all pretty sweet stuff. All right, guys, keep sending us your emails to the at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong and I'll get to your questions when I can. That's going to do it for this week's show. I know it's kind of a short one, but we'll bring more for you next week. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time for another bite of the apple.